I am Dr. Sharjeel and you are watching my YouTube channel Sharjeel I. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe at the end of this lecture so you can watch regularly my other videos. And I have a strabismus playlist with more than 50 videos so you can also watch all kind of strabismus diagnosis as well as surgeries so today's topic is alternative squint one of the most common types of squint is alternative in which both eyes alternatively takes fixation like this 20 years old female patient was worried about her ocular looks because uh, she had alternating uh, deviation since birth uh, and it's a uh, social uh, uh, problem a uh, young girl with uh, strabismus so alternative squint is further divided into esotropia and exotropia like here you can clearly see that it's a case of alternative exotropia now as the patient alternatively uses both eyes for fixation visual equity of both eyes is generally very good most of the time the 6 by 6 both eyes but up to 612 i haven't seen less than 612 vision in alternative squint um, usually one line difference can be found between the two eyes now after checking the good vision alternative fixation then you need to confirm that which eye is dominant and which is non-dominant now how to check it well, it's very easy fixate the patient for four target uh, like the top letter of the snellens chart and the eye which fixates is a dominant eye dominant eye fixates for a far target then fixate it uh, on a near accommodating target and the non-dominant eye will take fixation now uh, why we need to check uh, dominant and non-dominant eyes because uh, if there is a uh, less uh, deviation and we have to operate upon one eye then we prefer uh, to operate upon the non-dominant eye other advantage of near and far fixation is that the total amount of deviation will be revealed like in this case if you have observed that i have first shown you the near fixation and then far and the difference is huge for near it is about 15 degrees and for far it is about 30 prism, 30 degrees or 60 prism diopters now if you don't check uh, for far and you address only the near uh, deviation uh, then you tend to undercorrect the patients so whenever uh, you uh, examine the squint patient uh, you need to fixate uh, for near as well as far you need to check the visual equity you need to check uh, the extraocular movements uh, and you need to check uh, the fundus and then you can proceed to Hirschberg test, cover test, alternative cover test, prism cover test. Now in alternative squint you also need to check post diplopia test because as they alternatively fixate their pinocular vision is not developed. So when you correct it they develop diplopia double vision for a few days or weeks. So you can do it. Uh, in a post diplopia test uh, with the prisms uh, placing in front of the eyes uh, when the eye become orthophoric uh, and you ask the patient whether you now you see double or not and when the patient uh, is not uh, seeing double uh, it means that uh, post up uh, he will also not uh, uh, see double and if uh, the patient sees double then you can tell them that you will see double for a few days or weeks or months and then uh, the one image of the eye will be suppressed by the brain so in alternative exo 
you can do bilateral lateral rectus recessions which is more preferred as well as one eye lateral rectus recession and medial rectus resection now in this case i opted for one eye surgery and you can see that with one eye maximum correction the patient is almost orthophoric orthotropic thank you very much